before even writing my first program using files i need to talk about something called as the end of a file macro first let me clarify what you understand by the word macro we have already used it it's just a big word suppose i define pi as 3.142 pi is an example of a macro that means wherever pi occurs it will be replaced with 3.142 Similarly, capital EOF is also a macro. Now you will know what is EOF. EOF stands for end of file. And on operating system to operating system, it has a different value. Most likely it has a value minus 1, which is not the ASCII value of any character. That's why I put question mark because EOF is defined differently for different operating systems. So let's try to understand why we need this end of file and so on. Suppose I have created a file with all these contents and I have stored it in a hard disk. Now, when a program is reading this particular data, there should be some indication to tell that program that you have reached the end of the file. The end of the file is after this R. So after this R, if I have a special character, that special character is known as end of the file marker. So for example, if I am on Unix and Linux, the end of the file marker is Ctrl and D. On Windows, it is Ctrl Z that indicates the end of input or end of file. So this concept of end of file or end of input shall be absolutely clear when you take a look at the demo which follows this particular video session. So please watch the demo after this session to get complete conceptual understanding on what is the end of a file. In simple words, end of a file is a special symbol or a keyboard combination which indicates that I am not going to give any more input. All right. So EOF is a marker. Generally, it has a negative value. So in order to understand end of the file, let's take a look at a small piece of code. OK, on my left, I'm going to demo a piece of code using a function called as put care. Put care stands for put a character onto the screen. All right. So let's see what this program is. First thing what I have done here is I have defined a file pointer FT, FPTR, which is a pointer to a file type of a structure or a file type of a data type. We'll know why we have used int ch in a while, but for now just look at file star fptr. So using file star fptr, I am opening a file called as a sample.txt in read mode. Here I am assuming that the file has already been created. If this file is not created or it does not exist, then this is what is going to happen. The value of fptr is going to be null because F open is going to return null as the return value if this file does not exist. Then what happens is if the file does not exist then I need to give a message file open error and since if the file does not exist I cannot continue with the program. That's why I use this return minus one or I could also use the exit which will come out of this problem. So this step you need to really understand F open is a function the first parameter is name and path of a file. Suppose this sample.txt exists in the D drive. So I could in double quotes put it like this. I could say D colon to double slash because backslash has a special meaning in C. To remove the special meaning, I need to give one extra backslash. So suppose in double quotes, if I had put D colon double backslash sample.txt on the D folder, this sample.txt would have been open for reading. So please do understand this double slash is to remove the special meaning with the backslash because backslash is used with to generate an enter and all. So if you simply put in backslash, you will get an error. So double backslash removes any special meaning associated with this particular backslash. So once you open the file, okay, assume the file exists. Then what I'm going to do here is I am using this function called as fgetc. Fgetc stands for from a file get me a character. C stands for character. FPTR is this particular file pointer which links your program 
with the actual file on the disk. So FPTR hides all the complications that you need to deal with while working with files. So what it does is this function f get c has only one parameter which happens to be this file pointer. So what this f get c will do is it will read a first character from this particular file. It will read the first character from this particular file and it will assign it to ch. Since it reads the character and returns the ASCII or integer value of it, that is why I have defined int ch as a int. The return type of f get c is integer. That's why f get c is return value is assigned to ch because ch happens to be an integer type of data. Okay. Now, now it is important as long as I have not reached the end of the file, what I am doing is the character which I read is copied into f is copied into ch. Put care is going to display this character on the screen. Now, this particular thing of reading a character from the file, assigning it to ch and displaying it on the screen will continue forever till at some point when f get c tries to read and you have reached the end of the file, f get c is going to return end of the file value. Different operating systems have different value. Let's assume it is minus one. So minus one is definitely not equal to minus one. Assuming end of the file value is minus one. This loop fails and you will come out of the screen. So this showed you this character end of the file. Now, after you open a file for reading, just as you take out a file from the drawer, you read and put it back. So you're required to write this F close file pointer because that is the processing has to be done to indicate that the proper and complete processing has been done. So please be sure you write F close F PTR. Now let's take a look at one program to show you end of the file through a function called FEOF. So this is going to demo how you use this FEOF function. FEOF stands for function to determine whether we have reached the end of the file. So FEOF stands for function whether you have reached the end of the file. I have defined int character c. I have put while in a in infinite loop. You will slowly know why that is in the infinite loop. I am getting a character from the standard input. What is the standard input? It's the keyboard. From the keyboard, I am reading one character. Okay. The parameter to f get c is the standard in which is your keyboard. From the keyboard, I am reading one character. The ASCII value of that character, which is converted into integer, is assigned to c. Now, suppose this standard input had reached the end. Suppose I had pressed Ctrl and Z on Windows. Then this FEOF would have returned a value 0. 0 means I have reached the end of the file. I am going to break out of this while loop and then come back here. Okay. Otherwise, what I will do is I will read the character, assign it to C, display the character on the screen. I'll read the character, assign it to C, display the character on the screen. Let me give you an example. Let us say my file is just this one line. So it will read one character at a time. All right. And it will keep printing this character. At some point, what is going to happen is I'm after G, it is the end of my file. So what will happen is when F get C tries to read from the keyboard and I have pressed Ctrl and Z on the keyboard end of the file value is sent. Okay, standard input returns end of the file. So if I test with FEOF function, the standard input, this will indicate that I have reached my end of giving input and I can break and come out. So this particular program should really help you understand how to use this FEOF function. So the parameter to FEOF happens to be your stream. Stream can be your input device like keyboard, it can be a file, pointer, anything and so on. So again, to understand this program as well as the prior program, please, please take a look at the demo which follows this particular program. Then you are going to get a complete understanding of what I have explained here. Maybe you will have to look at the explanation once again after the demo to get complete conceptual clarity.